Alright, my guys, it's Jamie Mika here, and welcome back to Let's Play Crash Nitro Kart! And now we're heading on to the boss of Baron, which is Nash. And Nash is a shark that can't stop moving, and just wants to keep moving and moving and moving and moving. He has a really, really hyperactive personality, and he's a pretty awesome character. From the little that you see him in this game, I think he's a pretty cool character, and I wouldn't mind, you know, having him appear later on in the series, but. What can you do? <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm gonna go just a bit more into, um, uh, go into Nash, and, you know, uh, now, as you can see, he's a shark type creature, and, um, you can actually unlock him in the Game Boy Advance, um, version by beating him the f f for the first time. And... It says he also appears to have like a laser cannon device thing on his helmet, which um, I didn't really notice. I know it's a giant goggles and everything. But yeah, basically what he does is he kind of sets out these like shark teeth um, tracks on the floor, which slow you down. It's really annoying. Um, like the previous boss, the only challenge is really trying to get in front of him. Once you're in front of him, uh, it's really not much of a problem. As you can see, there's two different types of teeth. One of them are like just like double jaws that um, bite and jump up and down while he has like um, a set of um, teeth on the ground, like what he's doing now. Either way, they are both pretty annoying, but this boss isn't too bad. Now, um, this is it. Nash is a cybernetically enhanced shark creature who is champion of Baron. In, b in the beginning cutscene, Nash is seen boxing with himself, saying, pa -ba, pa -ba. When he becomes antsy, he begins yelling to Velo, but is scared off into his track. And um, then after that, it explains the cutscene after that. <laughs> Which uh, we're going to be getting into, so there's no point there. Okay, my mic isn't muted. <laughs> I should have checked that beforehand. I've got some trivia here. Nash is the only champion to not be warped away in the flashlight after losing to Team Cortex. Instead, he simply runs away when Velo's hologram appears. Nash is somewhat similar to Hanna-Barbera's Jabberjaw. They're both sharks, say, put him up, put him up, when they feel like fighting. And right before Coco puts him to sleep, he says, Nyeh, like Jabba does, so. Or Nyeh. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of a bit of a spoiler for the next cutscene, but... Oh well, Hot Coco, which, um, ow, is uh, actually a reference to that level in, um, Crash 3. Either that or, you know, she's just, um, talking about herself and just bragging. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. She does like... Uh, oh, yeah, this is something that I wanted to bring up. Coco likes to talk a lot when you play as her. She has like one of some of the most lines in the game. She laughs quite a lot or giggles. So in that regard, some people could probably find her quite annoying. But as I said before, I don't mind it because I quite like the constant um, talking in this game. I like it when uh, games do that. Um, as long as they're not like, you know, completely annoying, which I don't find this game to be completely annoying. So, yeah, especially since they have quite a lot of funny jokes put into it as well every now and then. So, yeah. Either way, we just beat Nash and we're going to be heading over to the cutscene. Yeah! Oh, hello there. Do you think I could get my key back? <laughs> you lost, buddy. I don't care! No, no, no. Eep. 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 I hacked his brain and put him to sleep. He looked like he needed some, the poor shark thingy. Eep. Eep. That's a first. Get him out of here this instant. Well, you're halfway there. Here's where things start to get tricky. On to Phenomena! Say 
cybernetic sharks. We should try that. Yes, yes, they could make great henchmen. But this one lost. <laughs> it appears to me that he'd fit right in. Give me oh, my key it. back! <laughs> and sharks make such silly demands, too. Why, you... Nash! Get out of here. I'll deal with you later. Well, you're halfway there. Here's where things start to get tricky. On to Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. <laughs> So yeah, we've unlocked the next world, Phenomena, do, 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 do. but first, we're gonna play do, 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 do. Uh, a little crystal hunt challenge. The uh, name is called Frozen Frenzy, I think? Yeah, Frozen Frenzy. And there's not much trivia about this, but um, it's kind of based off of um, Meteor Gorge in a way, and it has like blades from deep sea driving so I guess that's pretty cool we're not even out the for them thing yet are we no we're not we just drove past do, 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 do. Phenomena. <laughs> there it is frozen frenzy uh, yeah this one here can be kind of tricky uh, you might uh, you're gonna have to try and memorize where everything is um, uh, in a, actually, uh, remember, uh, uh, playing this one quite a bit in, um, the battle mode as well, and this one's actually quite a fun track to go through. Uh, um, yeah, you mainly want to memorize it. Uh, the bombs can be a, not the bomb, the TNTs can be a pain, because they're just placed in the most awkward positions in this track. Uh, most of the time, you, you'd want to, like, slow down when you get one, just so you don't to make sure you don't crash into <laughs> crash into um, another TNT like right there there's like two right next to each other I know the crystal wasn't there but um, that right like, okay, here you go here's a better <laughs> example there you go see I just showed the bad part of doing that so yeah um, do you do get uh, bombs from the item boxes so you might want to use them to blow up some TNTs like I did there Sadly, it doesn't do any, like, massive chain reactions or anything. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, that can be kind of annoying. So, you can't really, like, you know, bomb too many at once. But I guess if you position the bomb well enough, you might be able to. Because uh, when you throw the bomb, you can you choose when it um, blo blows up. If it collides with something, it blows up. But you can also detonate it by pressing the button again. Meaning, if you try spamming three of them in a row because you get three of them... You're just gonna blow up three of them right in front of your eyes. Wonderful! You won a token. At the starting line, your boost gauge will appear. Press the gas button to fill the gauge. If the gauge is in the red zone, when the light turns green, you get a boost. I swear he's really said that. <laughs> well then, then I could. Again, maybe it's just because I've watched this not longer. I don't know. I just feel like he said that before. I could be wrong though. Um, that gateway opens up back to the first um, place in the game. Which we don't want to do that because we've already gone past it. Next we want to go do 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 do. Phenomena. <laughs> do 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 do. Phenomena. <laughs> so I, I will never get over the name of this place. <laughs> just because of that. <laughs> Now, um, this uh, place actually has quite a few interesting um, levels. Out of Time, which I believe is the first, um, uh, is the level that leads to the boss. Um, I'm glad that you can do that one first. This level really, really starts showing off the anti-gravity stuff, because like, before it was kind of just like a pointless gimmick. Here, I believe they um, kind of enhance it, and it actually kind of seems like Mario Stadium from Mario Kart 8. I kind of just like how they made it so, okay, clocks are usually upwards, so if we, um, like, you know, they're usually facing, the, like, if you have a clock tower, it'll be standing upwards. Um, so they made it so you kind of, like, go onto it, but, 
it's it's really hard to explain about. Um, sit right here. We're on a flat surface, and now we're going to be driving up it. And I quite like that, and they're using the excuse of, oh, it's a clock to do that, because obviously if you was to read a clock, and it's face downwards, then you're going to need a helicopter to buddy look down to see what the time is. That'd be very inconvenient, whereas in America, they kind of just lift a bit of a track up and they just call it a day. <laughs> but, um, I do quite like um, how they did it like that. Uh, they could have technically done that in America, actually, because they do have a clock level in America, eh? But they didn't do that, so... Uh, the game's still fine, but um, I should probably go on about um, this track. Um, and it has no trivia. Great! <laughs> Remember the good old days where I just didn't have any trivia at all? <laughs> yeah, we're meeting those days again. Uh, it's similar to crashed um, Tag Team Racing's track, Dingo Canyon, I guess I could say that. Um, Apparently, fake crash can be found on this track if you play the GBA version, so cool. So you did have trivia, it was just inside a time massive like par paragraph and he didn't bother putting it in his own trivia section. Somewhat handy, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think I've explained this before, but the little frenzy firm thing on the right that charges, uh, you press R2 to activate that. I know I explained what it does, but I don't think I explained how to activate it. Uh, I do qu um, quite like the zone. It kind of um, just due to it being like clock based. It reminds me of Crash ba Crash Bandicoot Walked. And yes, if you go into those things at the size, they bloody eat you, and it's annoying. It's kind of like um, the prime plants in America, like, like they're jumping at the sides and they kind of eat at you. But, um, I don't remember them having like a drawn out cutscene for it though, which can really push you um, far back, which is kind of annoying. Oh, we got the clock item on the clock track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Crash. Booyah! <laughs> now, um, I will uh, have to bring out a bit of a warning here. No. <laughs> um, basically, as you can see, obviously I'm playing as Crash. I won't always be switching. Uh, at this point in time, I haven't actually... Um, have all the characters like recorded on their own tracks um on the game that i started up i haven't actually um unlocked all the characters and i like, don't have my old save anymore so um there may be a chance that i'll miss out a certain character during the adventure mode and then i'll just kind of show them off doing like one lap in um uh in like an extra part or something so if i miss someone um then yeah, I'll show off later. Plus, I don't even think there's enough tracks to even show off every single character anyway. So there's like... 12 tracks, I think? Because there's like 3 in each world and there's 4 worlds. Um, I guess if you count the last world as well, but the last world I have to show the adventure mode. The last level I have to show off the adventure mode version because boss. And I know there's more than 12 characters, because I'm pretty sure there is. Uh, uh, yeah. Ooh, Ogrebuka. Ooh, Ogrebuka. Wait a minute, Cortex is trying to voice act to pretend to be Aku Aku. Ooh, Ogrebuka. The boost gauge will only boost your cart if it's in the red zone. Once the boost gauge is full, it will expire. Remember that the fuller the gauge is, the larger your boost will be. Just to clarify, I just looked it up, there is definitely more than 12. There was like 17, 18, so... I think 18. I counted 17, but I'm pretty sure that it's an even number, so... Probably 18. I was rushing through it counting as well. But anyway, guys! Next episode! We're gonna continue... Whoa! We're gonna be continuing... Do -do 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 phenomena. And we're gonna be playing Clockwork Wampa. So see you guys then. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.